we are bringing this to you guys based on your feedback. So questions, interactions, anything you guys want to ask us, please. We have our panelists live that'll be able to answer those as well as myself and Jim. Okay, so the purpose of today's webinar, uh, we're gonna propose a main question and that is how members of the industry are adapting to the new normal and the challenges that AV professionals must overcome to push forward. So what does that mean? These times, you know, there's a lot of change going on. We need to evolve, we need to observe, we need to listen to our customers, we need to know what's going on. Um, it, it's not a first come first serve situation. We need to understand what's going on in the world to be able to adapt and move forward. And you'll hear that from our panelists. Um, that might include experimentation, that might include listening to new clients, understanding what the demands are, what people want. Uh, these times are very difficult for all of us. And you know the reason that we're all having these conversations is to learn from each other and grow forward. So just a brief introduction on myself. If you guys don't know me already, my name is Eric. I'm a product specialist here at TOA Electronics. I help out in PSG, marketing, as you can see, customer service, sales, kind of the jack of all trades. I love what I do. I've been in the audio industry for about 10 or 15 years now. Uh, I grew with professional audio. I'm a DJ. I'm a musician. Audio is my passion, and I love to help the people that use it on a daily basis. So let's get started here and uh, introduce my panelists. Now, before we introduce them, or they introduce themselves, uh, so we have two panelists spanning from both sides of the country. We have Mary Meeker from Mary Meeker Designs out in Vegas. And we have Greg Prairie based out of New Jersey right here from Outreach FX. So Mary Meeker, uh, MaryMeekerDesign.com is her website. Maybe we can post a link there in the chat, MaryMeekerDesign.com. Here's just a little clip from Mary's website here. We are highly skilled and creative designers, engineers, and managers dedicated to low voltage technology services Mary is constantly reinventing within the industry, growing through three major cycles, and she'll talk about that. Um, Mary began learning, if I'm not mistaken, about AV and became passionate about AV in the retail world. So Mary, why don't you introduce yourself, let everybody know who you are and what you do and your company provides. Sure. First of all, hello everybody and good afternoon to some, good morning to others. Um, my name is Mary Meeker, and I actually have a couple of businesses, but Mary Meeker Design is the primary company. My vertical is the retail sector, and that is a very tough sector right now, as we all know. As the retailers are trying to stay open, many are closing. I think I just heard about some yesterday additionally closing. Um, I focus primarily on that retail sector and globally work with different retailers. I think that in some of the initial information, um, the customers were listed in there. Um, but I work with them from the audio side and the video side, and also on the service and support side of these retail establishments. And that's my primary business, not to say that I don't touch other sectors, but that is primary. Okay, Mary, awesome introduction. We appreciate you being here. Let's move on to Greg. Greg is from Outreach FX. Greg is based out of New Jersey. A little brief quote on Greg's business here. Uh, Outreach FS, FX, excuse me, brings creative technical resources to a variety of markets, including churches, houses of worship, which I believe Greg specializes in, uh, ministries, theaters, schools, corporations, and the local community. Greg brings a lot to the industry. He does, uh, I believe he has learning experiences. He engages with his customers and he's very outgoing. Uh, Greg, let's introduce Greg to the webinar. Greg, tell us a bit more about yourself and what you and your company provides. Sure, it's great to be with you guys today. Um, I've been in the AV industry for about 20 years now and uh, got into it out of actually my love for house of worship. And uh, which is funny because most people that are AV integrators that's one of their least favorite verticals, but for me, it's always been my favorite. And um, out of that have grown into a lot of other verticals, uh, specifically education, hospitality, and assisted living facilities, which no one really knows where they fall. Uh, I never know what vertical to technically call that, um, but we do a, quite a bit of work in those um, main verticals. But for me, it's been a, uh, 
a fun adventure over the years. I love taking the time to rethink um, how the AV industry needs to grow and change for in each of those sectors and working with our clients to do that. Thank you, Greg. Awesome. And thank you again for, for being here, guys. We really appreciate it. Uh, and finally, on the internal side of things, we have my colleague, Jim McGinnis, and true technical wizard here at TOA. Jim helps, helps out in PSG design and engineering. Jim, introduce yourself and give us a brief intro. Welcome, everyone. Glad to see everybody can show up today. Um, I started with TOA back in 2012, but I've been in the audio industry, audio video industry for a number of decades. So I have a, a fair background on uh, what different markets have uh, done over the course of uh, any number of years. And uh, to TOA, I bring some of that uh, home audio video uh, sector with me, uh, along with uh, engineering uh, prowess to try to put together systems because, of course, TOA's equipment uh, can integrate into many, many different uh, sectors, uh, whether it be into intercom or you know, professional audio uh, or home applications under certain uh, conditions. So I try to pull that all together. I do systems design. Feel free to contact me at any time. Uh, our team here, along with Eric and a few others, will be glad to serve you uh, as necessary whenever. And uh, Mary and Greg, I've worked with a number of times uh, on various different projects, and uh, uh, they all come out uh, pretty good at the end, I think. So with that, I'll give it back to Eric. Thanks, Eric. Jim, thanks a lot. And also, thank you for being here. Jim's at our, at our office there. I am from my home studio, and uh, Greg and Mary at their respective locations. All right, guys, so let's get into it here. Um, let's just go over the structure of this webinar. So we want this to be very free and outgoing, a conversation between AV professionals in the industry. It's going to be good to hear from people that you don't necessarily hear from, people on different fronts, uh, Greg and Mary, again, both in the same industry, but might have specialties in different areas. So this is going to be very interesting. It's going to be conversational. We have a couple questions that are you know we're going to go down the line here with. Uh, that's going to be open to all panelists. If you guys want to uh, pick up with questions in the chat, you're welcome to do that. We'd love to answer those. Um, panelists, please, if you guys want to interrupt, crosstalk, conversations, whatever you guys want to do, polite interruptions are welcomed. So let's keep it open and free. So let's go to the first question on today's agenda. And again, we're all going through these difficult times during this pandemic. Um, we're all working together on this, but we all have different ideas. We all have different opinions and, 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 and means of getting somewhere during this time. So the first question is, how has your daily life and the way you conduct business changed since the pandemic started for you? Now, panelists, this could be, it could be on your professional side of things. It could be on your personal mm -hmm. side of things. It could be whatever you want to you know, chime in here with. Um, let's start with Mary. Mary, if you want to chime in here and answer that question, really appreciate it. Okay, well, on the fun and personal side, so we can all laugh is, you know, how do we get our hair cut? Now, you know, that's always a good one. And, you know, can you go out to eat? These are the kinds of things that really you're struggling with. But being in this industry for 30 some odd years and retail another 10 years or so before that, I have been through many, many cycles. Of course, if we're all old enough, we were through 9-11. And that was just like now with the pandemic. Oh my gosh, what just happened? Everything just stops. You don't know what to think. Then there was the 2008-2009 change of the business structure. and Nobody knew what was happening. The dot-com bust, right? So here we are sitting. What is going to happen tomorrow? What do we do? I think, and actually, it was, what, just about four months ago that most areas of the country were shut down. March 27th is the day that sticks in my mind. So we are four months down the road. What has really changed? What are we doing? So I'm sure for the first week, we all kind of were like, oh, what do we do? But then I think a lot of the innovators decided it's time to start thinking about what we can do. 
And what is it that we can do? Can we get into a building? Can we not get into a building? Oh my gosh, I had 20 projects. What's going to happen with those projects? So I think that it becomes a matter of a new learning curve for all of us. And we have to really think about what is going to happen in the future. But what is in front of us right now is how are we going to reopen business? That is the number one goal that I think all of us are trying to attest. I know Greg is going to talk about that, but it is one piece that is so vitally important. Um, you know, I love to think back 10 years ago when we were talking about telecommuting. Do we all remember the word telecommuting and saving the carbon footprint, right? It was so hard to have conversations with people about trying to work remote. Nobody wanted it. They wanted the big conference room. I think four months ago, within a matter of days, we proved that telecommuting, now that is called work from home, right? W, um, what is it? WFH, right? Work from home. That's now kind of the commonplace. And when will people actually get back into the office structure is unknown. And I think that that life forever is going to be changed. Conference rooms are no longer going to be big. So I think a lot of things have really changed in our world. And I'm going to be looking forward to what is happening. But how we're shifting business is not so much trying to stay with some of the things that we've done in the past, but helping our customers now into schools, now into gyms and other facilities to help them reopen. They are so frantic trying to figure out how to reopen. They need somebody to guide them through things like as simple as video conferencing, hybrid learning. These are the kinds of things that they're looking to our expertise to bring to them. And I've been working with a lot of different sectors beyond retail to help them reopen their doors safely and thinking about how to safely reopen. And that's been exciting. Thank you, Mary, all excellent points. And yeah, great, great point with the guidance. There's people out there, our customers are out there that are struggling with these times and they're not sure where to go. So that's all great points. Greg, do you wanna pick up and uh, tell us what you're at? Sure. So when this pandemic first hit, I was completely naive to how long this was going to last and to what the impact it would have on us as a company. I remember telling the guys like, hey guys, I think we're going to be shut down for a week or two and don't worry, we'll take everything back up in about two weeks. I, my thought was, oh, well, I'll just stop going out. And then in two weeks from now, we can all go out again because nobody's going to have this thing. And completely naive to the reality of how long this thing was going to last and how it was going to infect um, just everything in life. And, um, so quickly I went from that to, Oh dear, are we going to survive as a company? We were laid out on a handful of projects that we were only halfway through, which meant we were only halfway through collecting money on. And suddenly they were all shut down. Most of those projects still have yet to pick back up. Um, because, uh, a lot of them were in assisted living facilities and assisted living facilities still aren't letting you back in, in Jersey, um, to do any work. And so we have, half installs go in a lot of places that we're still sitting on and waiting till the day that we can get back in. And so my immediate response was, I don't know if we're going to survive this as a company. I don't know how any AV company could survive this. Um, because, um, especially in the Northeast, um, in the Jersey area, when we shut down, we shut down hard. There was no construction period. So it didn't matter. There was a, there was a long period of time where even if you had clients who wanted things installed, you couldn't install them because, we weren't allowed to. Um, and so at that point I was forced to lay off uh, pretty much my entire workforce and um, began the process of saying, well, since I can't do that right now, how do I reinvent ourselves as a company? How do I begin to think, what is the next step? Where is it going to be the next uh, booms in the industry and how do we get ahead of that? Um, and so my first response was, well, I know the verticals that I know and I know technology. And so how do I take the knowledge that I have on technology, mix it with the verticals that I know and begin to be able to forecast a little bit towards what are my clients going to need and begin tapping their shoulders now saying, let's have these conversations now because in a month from now, you're going to be asking me for it and I don't know if I'll be able to deliver it then. And we found really quickly our clientele was loyal to us because it was so based on relationships. Um, and because of those relationships, we were, I was able to, I wasn't just cold calling somebody. I was calling a friend. I was calling someone that I had an ongoing relationship with and saying, Hey, listen, I know this sounds crazy. You're going to want to buy 
video cameras now. You're going to want to But that's this is the way the AV industry works, right? It just takes a while to get from from idea to sign off, and that's where we're still in the middle of is is in a place where uh, we now have no shortage of customers again. Uh, we have a major shortage in supply chain uh, in certain areas, and so while I have all of these different houses of worship, for instance, that are looking for camera installs and streaming systems, not a whole lot I can do to su supply that in a timely manner, um, and they all want it tomorrow. And well, we're four to six weeks out minimally on some of that stuff. I've um, now I've started turning the corner to start saying, well, what's next? Because a lot of them, a lot of things immediately went to streaming online. And now that certain things are opened back up and we've all gotten a little screen fatigued, what is that next layer of um, the industry that people are going to be needing and wanting? And so I'm, tr I've been working towards that. And I think a lot of that is kind of hybrid systems, a lot of uh, zoom rooms, conferencing rooms where half the staff can be working from home. Half of them can be uh, in a conferencing room, looking towards some of those types of solutions for my clients and trying to forecast that now to say, Hey, you might not think you need this yet, but think about where you're going to be in a month from now. Um, and trying to stay ahead of the curve and trying to help our clientele's, uh, recognize that if they can be ahead of the curve, they're going to be the first ones to get the products. They're going to be the first ones ready to go and meet their needs of their businesses. Greg, excellent stuff. Relationships, understanding what they need, um, demand, forecasting, all, all good things. Let's shift over to Jim at our local office here. Jim, quick question for you. Are you seeing a marked difference in product support questions from customers now? What changes have you seen since this pandemic started? Well, our, our customer calls have changed. And of course, our product support group ha handles across the, across the board. It could be an end user, it could be an installer, it could be a rep or a dealer. So we, we cover the, the full gamut. So you know anybody is more than welcome to give us a call. But of course, right now with uh, the current pandemic situation, uh, uh, as noted just previously uh, by our other colleagues, um, you know, what are the solutions that we have going forward for a lot of different applications? So TOA has uh, been marketing our Amio and Lanubio products for that type of uh, home streaming, small business, remote location applications. Today I'm coming to you from our office um, and I'm in our in our one conference room that we use uh, pretty regularly, which uses Lanubio, which I am using today. So I'm free form here. I can walk anywhere in this room. You'll be able to hear me just fine. So it's a tracking system and it works really well. And we've come out now with an API for it. So it now integrates into some of the controllers out there like a Crestron or an Extron or AMX style control systems. But our calls have been, you know, what can we do uh, to help, you know, from remote? So then we take a look at our products and what ones can we, you know, log into via Ethernet. Uh, we have a new product coming out uh, that will be updated with e Ethernet access. Both uh, Linubio and Amio are Ethernet access. So many of the things that we're developing now are network capable, which means that you can have access and control. And then, you know, this way we can do uh, remote sessions. Linubio is perfect for doing, you know, home applications. Uh, I know, Eric, you're using it there. I'm using it here. Um, and we have a lot of interested customers now uh, uh, locally here in New Jersey and, and across the nation that are now looking for solutions where they can be, you know, remote, but yet together, if you know what I'm saying, through web conferencing. So that's... That's where the push is going, Re remote control uh, for a lot of the products and how can we do things separate but yet together. Yeah, Jim, and, and piggybacking off that, you know, I was, I was taking calls as well. A simple thing, and going into Greg with this as well, um, were houses of worship just trying to get audio out of their amplifiers so they can live stream. I mean, they don't know how to do that. And that's why we're here. And Greg, going into you, um, what changes have you seen? 
So it has forced us to reinvent how we're doing business in general. Um, you know, for, for years, sales for me was done face to face. Um, I work best when I can sit down with a customer over a cup of coffee and really just uh, hash out their, their dreams and, and have a little bit of a dreaming conversation with them about what do they really want? What do they really need? And be able to have even the frank conversation of, I know that's what you want, but is that what you really have budget for? And, and being able to, to do that. Um, this has forced us into a little bit more of a transactional occurrence, which I don't like. Um, it, we are not getting the same willingness on a lot of fronts to come and meet face to face. And so I'm forced doing a little bit more on sales calls via Zoom. I'm forced doing uh, sales calls over the phone and it doesn't have quite the same as good as it is. It doesn't have quite the same personal touch to it. Um, and it just makes it a little bit harder. Um, there's a little bit less of a tolerance for time frame. So before where I, I could sit and talk to a client for an hour, hour and a half. Now they're looking for 20 minutes. Tell me what you're going to do and why you're going to do it and why you're the, why this is the best option for me and why, I should spend that much. Um, so we've, I've noticed that. I've also noticed that um, it's we're now forced into a place where uh, everybody's uncertain of how much money they're going to have available to them. So they know the solutions they want, yet they, in many cases, don't want to put out the money that they need to get the solutions. And so trying to help our customers recognize, don't cheap out, don't buy um, garbage stuff that you're going to regret buying later, Build a build the right foundation on your gear for you to be able to grow and step with. And so most of my quotes where they used to be, here's your system. Now I have phased quotes. Uh, almost every quote I put right out right now has two to three phases of, hey, get in the door and do this, knowing that in a couple months from now, you can easily integrate phase two and phase three. Um, so it's really just forced us to rethink how we quote, who we quote to, and and how we interact with our customers. Thank you, Greg. And uh, Mary, anything you want to add to that, maybe in terms of how you're following up with your customers, pre-sales, support, yeah. post-sale? I think that, you know, some, some good points have come up. Relationship, 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 customer service, customer service, customer service are really at the forefront of what our industry needs to provide. And not only just our industry, but when I look at my retail customers, there's the whole get back into bringing customers in the building. There's the whole protocol sheet. This is what we're doing to keep you safe. And you have a checklist, but are you really doing those things for the customers? So it is right now from a retail perspective, when I look at the retailers I work with, they need to assure customers that they are providing a safe environment. And what are you doing? And if you're saying you're doing it, you'd better darn well be wiping down those counters or people may not come back. Same thing if you go to a place to eat. But from a relationship standpoint on my sales, I frankly have kind of taken a different stance on my sales. And I know everybody's going to just gasp, but I'm not selling a lot right now. I am placing a lot of product and a lot of material and donating a lot of my time for the customers and the people within my network to reopen. So while I may not be making money on helping them to use Zoom better or helping them develop a protocol, my relationships are being built astronomically because I am there for them, helping them do what they need to, taking issues off their plate because they're so burdened. If you're a school, you know, in California, Nevada, are you opening? Are you not opening? What do you have to do? Is it going to be a hybrid mix? Is it going to be, you know, on off? We don't want to open and then shut. So their focus is what's going on there, but we need to help them focus in another space to be looking at different things to bring people back safely to their environments. And that's really what I've been doing. And I'm saying that I'm, I'm making money and I'm busy, but I know the money is going to come because you follow your passion, you follow your heart, and the money is ultimately going to follow. No, it's not, I'm not getting checks in right now, but I know they're coming. And I don't worry about it because I know I'm helping. And right now, they've been donating a lot of time. And I feel good about it. Mary, you said that the other day when we were talking on the phone. And I just kept on thinking to myself, 
man, that's such a gutsy move, but it is so the right thing for your customers because the more you can support them, the more loyal they're going to be to you in the long call. And you're proving that it's not about the bottom. It's not about the dollar. It's about the relationship. It's about the sustained uh, presence and it's about uh, being with them for the long call. And I, I've done the same in the church world a little bit. And there's been a ton of calls that I've done on just helping people to figure out how to use Zoom or plug in web cameras. And obviously we're not making a whole lot of money on some of that type of stuff. And yet my hope is that my customers always know that I'm the first call, uh, whether it's good money or bad money right now, that we're going to be there to support them and have their backs. Because when when this thing does change, we want we want them to recognize, man, they were there for me even in the times when things were rough. And then you can also add, you know, and by the way, I didn't have to pay for them to be in here for three or four hours to help me understand what I should have already known. And those things are really, really important because time to them is something that's important. And, you know, yeah, we don't want to give away much, but now is the time to be doing things like this. Very cool, guys. Great points, building relationships, thinking long-term, um, just excellent, excellent, excellent points. Uh, moving on to our second question, I believe, or our third question, excuse me. Um, what are the main challenges you think professionals need to overcome in order to survive the new normal? So if we can limit this to maybe one or two key points, um, we'll start with Greg, if that's cool. Sorry, I had to find my space bar there. Um, yeah, I, I think some of the main challenges are going to be uh, one, um, sourcing product and being able to get it quickly and having those supply chains that you can trust. And two, there's a lot of people that are out there who um, came from the event industry who are now scrambling for work and have now decided that they are AV installers and quoting things improperly um, in the process. And so there's now a lot of people that are out there doing things that are actually dangerous to the, to the AV integration industry that I think we as AV integrators who have been doing this for a long time are going to need to explain to our clients why our cost, our quotes cost more and why it's going to take a lot more money to do what they want to do than what the other guy has told them that it's going to cost to do. Mary, you want to follow up on that? Yeah, I do. One key point that I think I'll make, which I think is a huge piece right now, kind of going along with what I said previously, but capital and money and resources financially are absolutely a huge piece right now because so many companies don't have a lot of financial resources to, for example, be giving somebody a TV screen or a camera or product free, let it sit there until they can figure out if they can find a grant for it or some other way to pay for it. They need it, they need to open, be patient, money will come. But if you have the capital, to put these items in, you can get the product, like Greg says, we have shortages. You can get the product, you have the capital, you're gonna win. It may just not be money that you get in 30 days. It might take you five or six months to get the money. You'll get it. You know, another side to that too is be creative where you're getting the product. I have um, I have businesses that are closing that are asking me to uninstall gear. And then they're just saying, take it. And so now I'm turning around to my other clients and saying, hey, I've got free gear. Pay me just to install it for you. Um, and so at least I keep my guys moving. And I, once again, prove to my clients how we can be their, their, their first level of support. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, Jim, do you, any, any concerns, comments, any challenges that you're facing currently? One or two key points? Well, I, I think the, the points that uh, Greg and Mary just brought up were excellent. And really what they're saying is, you know, from a, from a business point of view, you know, what channels are people trying to, to order from? And they're bringing to the table value added knowledge, which you're not getting from, as Greg was saying, people from uh, different industries suddenly thinking they're, you know, AV installers. You know, where do they get that knowledge? They, they, they're just slapping uh, equipment together you know, we, we try to uh, put together, you know, uh, exact equipment specs for people. Uh, like I said, I've worked with, uh, with Greg and Mary many times, and we, we try to design things that are going to work, work as the, the customer 
wants it to work, and it's going to last for years. So, um, you know, we provide uh, our, our value-added uh, point here at TOA is that we support our contractors and, and installers that are part of our base, and really anybody that calls in, because we want the product to be uh, properly understood, properly installed, and, and get what uh, is expected out of it. You know, we, we don't want the the old motto of, you know, good, fast, cheap, pick any two. We want it done right. And that's, I think, the goal here. We have to, you know, invent ourselves uh, or reinvent ourselves a little bit through these difficult times. But in the end, it's the customer relationships uh, for us to, you know, across the board and, and for Greg and Mary to their customer bases that are laying the, the seeds and the foundation for the future because uh, when the doors start opening, I'm pretty confident that uh, these two guys are going to be, you know, wailing on business uh, hand over fist because they're they're laying in some, you know, great uh, inroads to get their their uh, positioning uh, correct. Jim, can I add one thing? One thing that I was remiss in saying when I talk about relationships with customers, but it's also on the other side, relationship with vendors. I could not be without your team at TOA doing what I do in the field because sometimes I just draw a brain fart and I need you guys there. And you guys are there when I call, you know it's me, you pick up the phone, you walk me through it. And without that back end support that's provided by companies like TOA, I couldn't do what I do. So I thank you, not only the relationships from our vendors, but to our customers. Oh, that's uh, and we appreciate that very much. Our team works hard to support uh, you guys out there, and you know, as you know, you can call us at any time, and and you have, and we've talked many times uh, to me or Mike or whoever you're you're talking to out there. But there's always something, you know, and you know, our job isn't always uh, so easy. When you think about it, you know, we're on the other end of a phone, and we have to ask many questions so that we understand. What is the system that's being put together and or how are we trying to integrate to that system? Because we have many features and, and functions on our product, but as we integrate into other systems, it gets complicated. And you know that's why we're here so that we can make sure uh, as best we can that we you know uh, take advantage of every feature or function. Sometimes there's more than one way to do it. And uh, sometimes you do it two different ways because that works out the best for the end user. Thank you guys, all excellent points, much appreciated. Here's another one for you guys. We'll start off uh, with Mary on this one. Mary, how does a commercial AV pivot or how do we make the adjustment smoothly? And, and it, is, it is very uncertain, we're not sure about where we're going, but um, how does the industry pivot to adjust to the new normal? Well, you know, I think we've got to get back to basics. And, you know, I say that and, you know, everybody kind of wonders what that means. But, you know, we, we tend to design all of these really great systems with all of these gizmos and gadgets. We don't really know right now what the future is going to be. So I think we need to really kind of step back and say, okay, they've asked me to spend $2,000 on this solution okay, it might just be a screen for $2,000, right? If I can get screen A and screen B, screen A is 1,000, screen B is 2,000, okay, so I can sell them a screen that's reasonably as good for $1,000, what now can I take and use that other $1,000 for? So I think we need to start thinking a little outside of the box of just having the big sale, but taking money, making it effective, ROI is key point here, and then looking with your customer where else you can spend those additional dollars. I have a project right now that is on the fence in New York. We're not sure what's going to happen. I suggested to my customer, why don't we take that money because you want to spend it on an employee facing piece in an office building that nobody's going to be in until end of the year or later. Let's use that for customer facing money. Let's replace some items in the stores that the customers are going to see and take those dollars and turn them right into revenue. And so right now we're talking about how does that look? How can we make that happen with that remaining money? And how does that shift occur? And maybe pushing off those 
on office projects until next year when things are a little more known in the office environment, particularly for retail. Cool. Uh, Greg, any follow up on that? Yeah, I think for, for, from my perspective, there's two different thoughts. Uh, one, I think we need to learn from other verticals. I think uh, right now, I, I look at some of the verticals I work in and they need to learn from corporate verticals a little bit more. And uh, just saying that the needs of our end users are changing. And so while you've traditionally known the needs of your end user, kind of like what Mary was just saying a minute ago of, well, you were originally thinking about a front facing display. Let's look at something else. I think you need to do the same across platforms and across industry a little bit and, and learn from the lessons that, um, you can learn from other parts of the industry. Um, and so think creatively, think outside the box, think, well, how would I accomplish this in a conference room in corporate America? And how do I now scale that back to something that a church or a community center or a municipality can actually afford? Um, how do I take the tools that are out there and look at the features that they have and say, you know, traditionally I've always used this piece of gear this way, but it has X, Y, and Z features that I've never even thought about using, but now are extraordinarily useful because of the times that we're in. And so just be able to think outside of the box, go to manufacturers, continue to be learning um, and, and trying to figure out how gear can be used that way. That's probably the biggest thing I would say for those of us that are integrators. Thanks, Greg. Good points. Yeah, I mean, they might be sitting on something that can do one of their needs currently that they weren't sure about. So we need to let them know and, and make sure they're using the product to its full potential all the time. Uh, quick announcement, guys. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please use the Zoom chat box below. We do have one question that we'll be getting to in just a moment. We have one more question for our panelists. Again, if you guys have any question, please use that chat box. We'll be happy to answer that for you. All right, guys, final question of the webinar. Looking forward, and again, it's, it's, it's exciting, yet it's scary, right? Um, looking forward to the future of AV, what are you guys most excited about based on what's going on and where maybe you see the industry going or you know, maybe new products coming out in the market? It, there could be a vast majority of things. Um, and we'll start with Mary. Mary, um, Looking forward, what are you most excited about with the future of AV? Well, I think I, what I'm excited about is just a new learning curve. I've thrown myself into some different pieces of the puzzle. I'm learning how to write programs, how to write apps that I never thought I would ever be doing again. And so what was most exciting is I love learning. And so I've put myself in front of different avenues that I might have not ever touched before and I'm learning new pieces, and every day I'm finding out something new. I'm being humbled by what I don't know and humbled by what I do know. And so it's very exciting. And I think that I would challenge everybody, pick something that you're concerned about, don't know, learn about it, and just run with it. It's a good point. Yeah, I mean, we have, we're very busy and, and we're learning new things, but and I mean, time is our, is our best friend here. Let's use it to our advantage. Let's learn new things. I'm um, just like Mary. I'm constantly wanting to learn programming, Mary. That's very cool. Um, there's so many things in this industry to, to learn about and to understand and to get better at not only what you do, um, you know, but what, what others do. I mean, bring value to the table and, and just don't do one job anymore. Do, you know, do multiple things and just keep learning. Uh, Greg, do you want to piggyback on that? Uh, yeah, I think what Mary said is absolutely true. This is the time to be learning. This is the time to be thinking creatively. This is the time to uh, not stick to the status quo of this is how I've always done it or how I've always designed it. But now it's time to go and say, let's find a new way of doing this. Um, and I am excited because I think manufacturers are going to need to make that change too. So I do think there's going to be a flood of new products that will hit the market at some point uh, that will address the needs that are out there. And I'm always excited when new products hit the market. It's always something fun to see how we're going to adjust and how we're going to learn. Um, and um, I think part B of that is it's, um, I enjoy learning from one part of the industry, from one client and being able to share it with another client and being able to just see how um, an industry can kind of grow together. And so being able to, to talk to one of my clients and say, 
hey, here's a creative way these people tried to address something. Let's find a creative way for you or let's see if this opportunity works for you. So it, it forces us to be able to do things that maybe traditionally we've never thought of or had the ability to. Good points, Greg. Much appreciated. And uh, Jim, if you just want to follow up there, what are you excited about going forward? Well, I mean, these times, you know, uh, give you the opportunity to think and learn, as, as has been stated. And with that, you know, our engineering teams are, are working on the next steps for the future for connectivity and control. And uh, there will be some new product coming down the line. And I think uh, it's going to be pretty exciting uh, to add uh, some extra features and control into certain levels of equipment that, that we haven't seen it uh, in uh, in the past. And the other the other point I wanted to bring up is, you know, always explore the equipment that you have because often you know you're only using a small tidbit of what a particular piece of equipment can do, you know, are you using the gear to its fullest uh, advantage? And, uh, you know, that's what our support team is here uh, for, you know, whether it be current product or some uh, older series, uh, you know, Twilight uh, type product. Uh, we're here to help you out because sometimes, you know, it'll be a, a mix of, you know, adding new product to old and understanding what features and functions uh, we can take advantage of to help, you know, morph various uh, situations into systems that can uh, work in the current, in the current uh, climate. So, uh, you know, always give us a call. We're, we're always uh, welcome to, to help you guys out. Thank you, Jim. Well said. Okay, guys, let's wrap it up. Once again, thank you, panelists. Thank you guys for viewing. We really appreciate it. Uh, Mary, with your, with your guidance, your direction, uh, how to guide customers through this pandemic, Greg, relationships, um, you know, what you need during these times, understanding demand, foreseeing the future, forecasting. And, and it all really comes down to, based on what you guys said, is, you know, understanding our clients, providing the best customer service possible. And at the end of the day, it's a win-win for everybody. Uh, yes, you know, money's not coming in like it was before, but like Greg said, to look, well, to be in the moment and then foresee as well, it's understand that, yes, it will get better. We're growing with our customers. Take the time to go out there and give the best you can, and, and things will definitely get better. Okay, guys, um, it looks like we do have one question here from our viewer. This is from Gunner, and I believe this is for Greg. Question is, do you see or do you foresee the emergence of new technology arising and or any increase in the demand of previously underutilized technology? Um, any of you guys can answer this. I believe we kind of you know focused on this. Yes, there's going to be new stuff coming out. There is stuff currently like our meeting IO series. Um, we have products that do more than what they're advertised for, like Jim was saying. Um, so if you guys want to just chime in here and, and give your two cents, it would be much appreciated. Yeah, so what I, I take a... Um a solution based, based approach, meaning I look at what my client would uh, need done best, whether I know how to do it or not. And then I spend the time to figure out how to get it done. And half of the time I discover that there's a way to do it with gear that I didn't realize I could do it with. Um, and so I'm able to find a solution based upon gear that's already in existence and half the time gear that I'm already used to installing, but there's a weird setting somewhere that you can flip and suddenly now it does something that I never knew it could do. Um, and so that's, that's the case. Start with the need of your client. start with where they are and, and don't say, well, I can only give you X really try to brainstorm what would serve their solution best, whether you know how to do it or not, and then go figure out how to do it. And then when you can't figure out how to do it, come back to companies like TOA and say, you need to figure out how to do this. Um, because <laughs> The companies need to hear those things in order to know what products they need to be able to release and what products need to come down the pike. I do think development takes time, so I don't expect a flood of new products in the next month or two, um, but I think all manufacturers, including TOA, is going to have learned from this of what's needed to move forward in the future and in time as they develop their products, their products will be better for it. Okay, cool. Uh, Mary, I got one for you here. 
this is from a CJ, and, and you could probably answer this being, uh, you know, your number one customer being retail. Um, what industries do you think will be hit the hardest during the pandemic or what industries have you seen hit the hardest? Uh, do you see any industries benefiting from this pandemic? So um, any industries that stayed open maybe that are um, benefiting from the current situation, taking a negative to a positive for se. So Mary, sure. if you want to chime in there. Sure. So, you know, retail has been hit hard. When you look at gyms and healthcare, those have also been hit hard. And restaurants, small mom and pop type restaurants, um, those restaurants have had to shift into takeout and they've been doing so-so. Restaurants um, in some of the places that I visited are doing outdoor dining. Those are all great. Um, retail, I think it also comes back down to the word of capital and where are they with their capital um, stake. I think that some of the smaller retailers, we all know, are going to go away. And I think that you're going to see some merging of some retailers. I saw something the other day that there was a Home Depot in a Target store. Um, I think you're going to start to see little pop-up spaces in the retail stores from, you know, where we used to have shop within shops within retail, like a Michael Kors and a Macy's store or whatever. You're going to see a lot more of that and maybe, you know, little food segments or Target now has expanded their food segment, I think you're going to start to see these retailers looking to do other things. You've got malls that are virtually empty. How are they going to reinvent themselves? They need to, when we can get back to it, become an outdoor, well, not everybody outdoor, but for the most part, an outdoor kind of a venue that is more of an entertainment facility. I also have been seeing for a long time, movie theaters need to take it to the outdoor and do drive-ins. I'm seeing those pop up all over the place right now. It's crazy what I'm seeing on the water and parking lots and malls. It's, it's great stuff that is all going to be popping up. So I'm not sure what I see for new sectors, but I see a lot of things going on based around customer service. And what can we do for you at home that draws you into the retail store? Why do you want to come in? We want to draw you in. So I see a lot of applications that bring people into the retail space, things that they can't do at home because retail, you want to go see it, touch it, feel it, try it on. Thank you so much, Mary. Yeah, I, I did notice uh, an increase in drive throughs Those have been popping out, which is pretty cool. I have yet to be to one, but I definitely want to visit one. Uh, okay, one last question for Greg. Uh, Greg, you mentioned that companies have um, tightened on spending. So a lot of companies, and I saw this as well, go out there and buy um, consumer-based solutions for professional type jobs. Um, how long do you foresee the timeline or timeline of this trend happening? So um, it, it's, it's a difficult question to answer because we really don't know, but uh, your thoughts on that, Greg? I, I see that happening for a while, but I also see how often people are getting burnt by those consumer grade uh, applications and then having to respend the money on the right solutions. And so my rule of thumb is every time I lose a bid to somebody saying, oh, we're just going to go buy X, I just know wait a month or two and I'm going to get the call. Um, and that's where the relationship, take this whole conversation full circle, that's where the relationship matters because I've told them right from day one, I don't think that's going to meet your needs. I think this is what you need. If you feel like that's the only thing you can afford, try go ahead and try it. But I'm telling you, that's not the right solution. And because I was honest with them, they usually come around back to me in the end. Um, I think the other issue, when I mentioned supply chain earlier, that's the other thing is people are saying, oh, you're telling me this is going to take four to six weeks to get. I go on to online retail and it's saying more, more are coming soon. And so they think they can go buy it from online retail faster than you can source it, which isn't true. Um, but it's the perceived value or perceived idea that it is. So I'm getting a lot of calls on like, hey, if I buy it, can you install it? And my answer to that has been, sure, as long as you're buying the right stuff. I, won't, I don't install garbage because I don't want to service garbage. But if you buy the right stuff, I prefer you buy it through me. But if you didn't, I'll still work with you. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. All right, guys, that's a wrap. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. Let's thank 
Greg from Outreach FX, Mary Meeker from Mary Meeker Designs, and my colleague Jim. Much appreciated, you guys. We thank you guys so much. Um, quick reminder, guys, the video, once this is done and posted, it will be available on Facebook. So if you have a Facebook account, log on to our uh, page, and there'll be a link there for the video if you guys want to share it with your friends. Um, I think this is great information. We learned a lot here, so please throw it out there. Make sure they all see it. It's going to be available forever. So whenever you get a chance, please send that out. Um, also, we are conducting live webinars monthly, usually towards the end of the month. So please keep that in mind. And we do Zoom signups as well. And if you're not able to get in, like I said, these fill up rather quickly. No worries. Our Facebook page is going to have it available to watch online. Uh, once again, guys, we are doing this for you. We appreciate the questions that are coming in. Uh, if you guys have, have any questions, comments, any ideas you might have going forward uh, that you might want to hear about during these webinars, let us know. We would love, love to talk about them. All right, guys, again, Sound Supply, new podcast that we're releasing weekly. Please tune in. There's going to be a link in the chat as well as the Facebook comments below. Uh, we have a video of the podcast. We have audio feed only. If you're commuting to work still, if you're going to the office, throw it on Bluetooth, listen to the podcast. It's good weekly information to keep you guys in the know. Um, we talk about what's going on currently. We talk about new products that we're releasing, all great information that can be utilized fully. So please check out that podcast if you guys have not heard that yet. Uh, going forward, we have some exciting plans in the future. Uh, dealing with our social media videos that we're doing, marketing. Uh, we have new special guests coming on. We're very excited to be doing this and, and being allowed to be doing this and sharing our knowledge with you guys to keep you guys in the know. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Again, if you guys have any questions that we didn't answer, please email us, shoot us a comment, use the Facebook comments link. Um, we'd be happy to answer those as soon as we possibly can. So once again, guys, thank you. Stay cool. It's very hot here in Jersey. I'm not sure where you guys are tuning in from, but uh, be safe as well. Remember to socially distance, of course. Uh, this is still going on. We're going to get through this. We'll work together and we will get better. So once again, my name is Eric, product specialist at TOA. Thank you for tuning in and take care.